Hello, it's Helder here, and today I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about rope and different types of rope and how to make it last. Uh, one of the things that I try to avoid with rope or any type of cordage is cutting it. So what I'm also going to do is share a couple knots, very basic knots, uh, that I use when I'm out in a field to help avoid cutting rope. All of that being said, there are times where, of course, I do need to cut rope. And to accomplish that, I need a sharp knife. And for that, I use my trusty Wicked Edge 130. So I'm going to just rip really quick through a tutorial on sharpening this knife. I'm only going to use a couple stones because this knife is still in relatively good shape. But I do want to give it a better edge so that I could easily cut through this rope for the demonstration. Once again, I'm not going to harp very much on the sharpening process. I have other tutorials out there that I'll link now in the top right. So if you want to know more about the sharpening process with the Wicked Edge, be sure to check those videos out. All right, so I'm all set up here, ready to go. I have my angle set uh, because I've sharpened this knife so many times in the past that I wrote down the angles for the knives that I use the most, which is a good idea. And then whenever I do need to sharpen those knives again, I don't have to spend time finding the correct angle because I already know what that is. So I'm all set up to go. The stones that I'll be using are the 1500 from there to the 2200. And I'm going to finish off with the 3000. So let's get started. Okay, it's feeling pretty good there. Good time to switch over, wipe down the blade. Feeling good, nice and smooth. And we'll go ahead and finish them off with the 3000 grit. Be sure to wipe down your stones to avoid contamination. That's feeling great. That is feeling extremely sharp. Exactly what we need for uh, practical work when we're out in the field for things such as cutting rope. So now when we do choose to cut some rope, nice, simple, cleaner cut. When you do have a dull knife, a lot of times you got to go more into that sawing type action, phrase the rope a lot more, and you end up losing more rope. And uh, once again, <laughs> The goal here is to try avoid cutting rope, but when you do it, try to do it right. Now, a few tips that you want to think about is uh, these are the ropes that have a bit of wax in them or some nylon. Uh, what you could easily do with them is you're able to singe the tips to stop them from fraying. So just go ahead with your lighter, just singeing a little bit on there, getting around the edges, and basically it just melts around itself. Now with paracord, same thing, 550 cord. Just burn the edges. Most people are very familiar with that, but pretty much any type of waxy type rope so that you could get a good seal and be able to prevent this type of fraying from happening, which of course just ruins your cordage. So one knot that I learned back in the day in the Boy Scouts to help save cordage is the sheep shank. So for demonstration purposes, imagine this end of the rope is tied to a tree and the other end of the rope is also tied to a tree. But now you have all of this slack. And what a lot of people would do would be to cut the rope to begin with to make it the correct size. But now what you can do is utilize the sheep shank knot. And let's say this is the excess rope that's in the middle. Remember, this would be taut on one side. This would be taut on the other side. So now you could actually work with this while the rope is actually tied or fixed to the location where you would have it. And all you're going to do here is create a loop, bring it towards you, feed the other end in back down make it a little taut here okay this side same exact thing so now i'm holding it here take this little loop bring it towards you just cinch it over that little bite that you find there and then cinch it down okay so now you would have both sides here so as you can imagine this would be taut and you're saving that cordage in the middle by using the sheep shank as opposed to cutting rope uh, keep in mind that you could also have your loop go either way okay so if you're bringing it towards you and cinching it down that works and you could also bring it away from you and cinch it down so you have some flexibility depending also on the situation and the location where you're working 
One more simple knot for utilizing, let's say you have two ropes or two smaller ropes and you need a longer rope. And a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll open up their new cordage, 50 feet, take that and uh, cut it up to the right size. Well, instead of that, you can go ahead and use your smaller pieces, tie this square knot right there, and now join them to make that one longer piece. Once again, preserving the, uh, the other cordage that should be saved for a rainy day. Okay, so fairly simple. Cross the ropes, fold the bottom one over. Okay, same thing, on, <laughs> then just repeat again. Right over left, cinch down, you have your square knot. And the last knot I'm gonna share with you is the sheet bend. Okay, now this knot is used, let's say the square knot, for joining two ropes, let's say, that are similar in size. Now, when you have a little bit of a difference in size, sometimes even more than this, because I think the square knot would even work well on this, you would use your sheet bend. So now you're gonna just take one end, put it on the bite, take your other rope, you're gonna go through. Okay, so you're gonna go up, you're gonna go around, and then you're gonna go underneath that same rope. Okay, cinch it down. And that's how you would join two ropes of different sizes or different width, let's say. So I hope that you found this information useful, uh, just sharing a little bit of the basics, how to preserve your cordage, when you do need to cut it, what you need to do or what you should do. And uh, one of the main lessons in this, always have a sharp blade with you while you're out in the field. So I hope you found this uh, information useful. Hopefully you could uh, retain a couple things. A lot of it might've just been redundant for you, just a good reminder. But always keep in mind, try to preserve your cord. And remember, always have a sharp blade with you out in the field, whether it's for rope or whether it's for any other countless situations. As you well know by now, the way I like to achieve that is with my Wicked Edge Sharpener.